today I'm back and I'm going to be talking today about challenges in machine learning. Now this frankly is probably the most important thing that we are going to be talking about in the entire machine learning curriculum because today is basically where your entire knowledge about supervised learning kind of culminates and this is the most important takeaway that you can probably have from all of the sessions combined together. So today's session is good not because it kind of talks about the most important things in ML but also because of the very fact that it kind of you know uh, talks about the bits and pieces of each of the algorithms specifically right about how each of the algorithm kind of performs as compared to others so today is going to be a fun session today is going to be a really good learning sessions and as i've probably been saying around for the last three sessions again today we are going to be talking about something which is not algorithm specific there's nothing that is uh, going to be something which is where we are going to be talking about some cost function or some gradient descent nothing of that sort these are extremely simple easy to understand intuitive sessions these are all based on engineering hacks and that's all we have got to do today as well as compared to the last days right so today again uh, welcome to challenges in machine learning we are going to be just talking about all of these things so just be with me and we'll get started so today's agenda right so today's agenda we are going to be talking about the challenges in machine learning out of them we are going to be spending a good amount of time good amount of time on this first one right which is what is imbalanced data so that's something that we are going to what is imbalanced data and how do we deal that that is going to be the major chunk of the session today uh, after that we are going to talk about the other things which are dealing with small data sets and the values of k and k full cross validation and do which is a classifier that you want to go ahead with so the last three problems are something which is relatively much smaller and we are going to be talking definitely be talking about them uh, but a good chunk of the day we are going to devote to imbalanced data and the ways to deal with it right so which are different things that you see here so cut to the chase what is imbalanced data right so we have been talking about imbalanced data slightly I think in previous session I had mentioned about a bit about imbalanced data but we definitely did not kind of deal with it thoroughly so today is the day when we start talking about imbalanced data and how to deal with it thoroughly right so before we kind of get there how you deal with imbalanced data let's first try and understand what is imbalanced data clearly imbalanced data is a concept where you have data from multiple classes and if it so happens that one of your class basically has a lot more data points than corresponding to the other class that is a very simple intuitive understanding of class imbalance so there are two classes uh, here as you can see this is your class one and this is your class zero so class one has a lot of less number of examples right so this is frequency this is frequency and this you can see is class one class one has got a lot less number of frequency as compared to class zero right so this is the most typical kind of class imbalance problem as you can already understand from the word class imbalance uh, it does not definitely apply as much to regression problems so class imbalance as a concept is mostly limited to classification problems and you can see instead of two classes it could be multiple classes here the whole fundamental idea is that if you have multiple classes or single or even at least two classes right if if you have at least two classes that you're trying to predict and out of those two or multiple classes if one of the classes have a lot of less data right and the other class has a lot more data right so there's imbalance between the classes that's the whole concept behind class imbalance fairly intuitive easy to understand right there's nothing about that so class imbalance regularly occurs in data sets pertaining to multi-class classification tasks as well uh, which is very easy to understand because if you have binary tasks you still would tend to have probably some good data sets but if it's multi-class 10 classes would be there 15 classes out of that what is the probability that all of them would be equally distributed almost zero right you would if you have multiple classes there's always going to be a chance that one of them would tend to end up with a lot less data than the other classes so that's something that kind of uh, you can fairly expect in uh, multi-class classification but it definitely goes without saying even a lot of lot of industry-wide uh, problems that we deal with on a day-on-day -day basis are actually class imbalance problem even though our binary classification tasks they're amply there in the current uh, industry and day-to-day -day work so we'll talk about some of those examples so 
these are some of the examples as I was mentioning about uh, detecting uh, what are some real day-to-day -day examples of class uh, imbalance problems. So fraudulent transaction, say any kind of anomaly detection, right? So this could be fraudulent detection. This could be, say, for example, sensor-based data, sensor-based prediction of whether there would be a fault in a ship or a wreckage in a ship. So you have this sensors data which are attached to the entire hull of a ship and you're kind of trying to predict when would be the next failure or wreckage that might happen or crack that might happen. So all of those kind of anomaly detection, right? So if you have a market data, right? And your data is coming in from source and you're trying to detect if there's an outlier in the data. So all of those examples are basically examples of anomaly detection and they all happen to be class imbalance because of the very fact that anomalies would only happen once in a blue moon kind of a thing, right? Whereas the normal data is what you tend to see the most of your time. In 99% of your time, you would have normal data and it just was one and 0.01% of the time that you would have the anomalies. So in general, all kind of anomaly detection, you know, if there's, a, if there's someone, uh, all kinds of anomaly detection problems that you can think of. Fraud detection I've already talked about, sensor-based wreckage detection. So those are definitely examples of, uh, you know, basically they're all examples of class imbalance problems. So the other examples of class imbalance problems are basically predicting rare events. Again, very similar to anomaly, there's not much of a clear distinction between them. But the whole concept as a whole is basically when you're trying to predict events, anomalies, anything which are very rare right and, and you're collecting a data about all of them you would tend to have those data only the the real data right the wreckage data or the fraud data so people having fraud probably would be seven ten people out of one million people that's the amount of uh, sparsity would have tend to have for fraud data right so these are very very rare problems right because it's not like every transaction in the bank is fraud otherwise you would not be transacting in a bank so that's the kind of sparsity we are talking about in seven in a million, 10 in a million, 100 in a million. That's the amount of sparsity which is really a problem to deal with. If you try and train your model directly on them, there's gonna be a problem. Now let's try and understand why this is a problem, right? Now we understand what is class imbalance. Class imbalance is the problem. We have two or multiple classes out of which one class has a lot of data, the other class has you know, very few data, very few data and you have to somehow make your machine learning model learn on this data right that's a challenge and that's the biggest challenge that we are going to be talking about today so let's first understand why having an imbalanced data is a problem in the first place so consequences of imbalanced data right the first point is bias in the model towards the dominant class which is fairly understandable right so if you have a data which contains 99 percent of fraud non-fraud examples and one person of fraud examples and you don't do anything you just train a model as it is right your model would tend to learn that everything is non-fraud right because it's very unlikely that your model would be learning from that one person of those instances right so it's very very important uh, it's very very it's, it's a very very big challenge as per se that uh, if you if you kind of take your data as it is and kind of don't do any kind of pre-processing the things that we're tackling of sorts uh, if you just train as it is you're gonna face a lot of problems because obviously the more the sparsity uh, the more your model would be biased towards your dominant class right so we have to kind of uh, you have to kind of deal with that right because as, I've, as you can clearly see here if your model is trained on basically 99% of your fraud examples you would tend to predict all of your examples as fraud right second problem is difficulty in assessing model performance now this is something we have already talked about a bit uh, where we talked about class imbalance problems and accuracy measures. We had talked about how accuracy is not really a good measure. And uh, so if you are trying to use something like an accuracy kind of a metrics, it's not really gonna work out because obviously accuracy is something which is extremely, extremely influenced by class imbalance. So in case of cancer detection, right, which is tumor malignancy or benign detection. So all of those problems that we have discussed in logistic regression, those are ex typical examples of class imbalance problems again, right? Rare events, right? It's not like everyone who comes into the medical clinic is gonna be diagnosed with some abnormality. So people diagnosing with abnormality is very less. Whereas people coming with normal symptoms are much more higher so that is that is a common scenario so if you're trying to use accuracy there if you remember from a logistic regression class 
accuracy was not really helpful right so in fact we'll check that out here again so let's kind of go through an example to appreciate that fact again now let's try and look at this particular model model a and out of so this is a fraudulent transaction data that we are talking about this is an example of class imbalance that i've already explained there are two classes uh fraud and non-fraud non-fraud is a lot higher than fraud right so out of the 99 percent genuine non-fraud transaction the model predicts 98.5 percent correctly that's awesome uh but what about the one percent fraud transactions right out of this this model predicts 0.25 percent correctly uh which is not so good right because out of one percent so because if you look at this model the job was basically to figure out which transactions are fraud right so now out of those fraud transactions it could only pick up one fourth of them right which is not a good idea but you can see the model has an accuracy which is 98.75 percent now this is second model model b now of model b model b of 99 percent genuine transaction it picks up 98.25 correctly which is roughly bad than what model a was but in case of fraudulent transaction it picks half of them correctly as compared to model a which was picking up one fourth correctly right uh, you can see the accuracy numbers for both the models are still the same, right? It's 98.75%, which is, sounds like a very high number. And you can clearly see why that high number is, right? Because there are 99% of the transactions which are genuine. So this is something I've already explained in the logistic regression class that if you're using accuracy as a parameter for evaluation, these are some of the problems that you're going to always tend to see because accuracy is something that is completely biased by uh, class imbalance so that's something to keep in mind as we now go ahead uh, obviously now I've explained to you our model B is much better because uh, model B was picking up one half of the fraudulent transactions correctly as compared to model A which was picking up one fourth even though their accuracy was same right so in real life scenario you would want to go ahead with model B as compared to model A so now that we know what is a class imbalance problem there are basically three ways to tackle it um, actually four ways right so the first one is obviously change the data the second one is change the algo and the third one is uh, change the evaluation metric right now change the evaluation metric is not as much of a you know, pre-processing step it's more of you know you're tracking the right thing right so just changing the evaluation metric would not help because changing the evaluation metric is just making sure that you're tracking the right kind of thing you are not tracking accuracy right as we have already explained accuracy is not the best thing to work with in a class imbalance data so changing the evaluation metric would not change much so basically two major techniques changing the data and changing the algo and obviously there's a fourth thing which is buy and collect more data unfortunately i'm not the right person to teach you that uh, i'll just kind of stick to change the data and change the algo okay log on to gray adams learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.